So I recently went back and reviewed Michael Mann's The Keep from 1981? 1983. And I realized that the question of whether or not it's a good film, in my case, hinges on comparing it to the book that it's based on by F. Paul Wilson. Basically, it's a situation where the book is strangely bad in its own right, in that, let's say you had watched the film and never read the book, you would think that this was a horror novel, but in fact, The Keep by F. Paul Wilson doesn't really read like a horror novel. It actually reads like a romance novel with a lot of World War II period detail. And the daughter character is really the center of the narrative. Much of the middle third of the book is devoted to the character of the daughter, her, her internal monologue. We see the fact that she has to take care of her father all the time, that she has no man in her life, that she should have gotten married already, or she's wondering about the mysterious stranger at the inn. What kind of man is he? It's all a little touchy-feely. I don't have a problem with romance. It's just that in the book, the execution is bland. And it goes on for a long time. And then added to that in the novel, you have the story of, uh, uh, what's the creature's name? Um, don't tell me. Uh, um, Molasar. In the book, Molasar is supposed to be some, uh, like, lich king. You know, a necromancer. Some evil wizard who has transcended death and may actually be possessed by a demon. There's also a subplot about how some of the Nazis think that Molossar might be a vampire, when in fact Molossar does some of the things he does to make it appear as if he's a vampire, to frighten off the Nazis and the peasants. So there's this interesting meta angle of the monster trying to act like another monster to throw the people off. Not that it really goes anywhere, but still evidence of kind of like a meta level of thinking in the story, which I like. What I didn't like when I read the book is that there is no tension to the horror elements. More like blasé descriptions that don't give the reader any of that feeling, you know, of, of being scared where you, like you're compulsively turning pages to read it. It's not like that. It's very, it's very dry. It almost has the feeling of a novel that grew out of a Dungeons and Dragons crossover game where there were demons and Nazis. It, it has this odd fanfic uh, feeling to it. However, there is a terrific climactic scene that takes place after Molossar has wiped out the cadre of SS troops, where he crosses the bridge to the keep and there's like swarms of rats uh, sweeping across the bridge in front of him, kind of like Nosferatu leaving the abandoned uh, freighter he arrives on with the rats. And that would have been really cool if they could have put it into the movie. What I want to say about the Michael Mann film is that if you read the book, and then watch the movie, you can see that man, like, really did a good job of finding the imagery of the story and, uh, you know, making the visuals mean something. And besides that, it's full of man's trademark documentary style of photography. Almost every scene in the film is lit in a really interesting way. I know that man has officially, like, abandoned the film, you know, won't have anything to do with it. It's too bad, in a way, that the film is languishing because it is so visually strong, even for a project as muddled as it was. A sad thing about the film was that special effects man, uh, Wally Vivers, passed away while they were making it, and leaving man to have to try to execute most of the important special effects scenes uh, himself, dealing with with the creature. I think he tried his best. To his credit, I think some of the effects work really well. I love the image of the uh, lightning hitting the Nazis and then them breaking apart like statues. I thought that was kind of a neat effect. Even the Molossar costume, too. I think Mann had the idea that Molossar was kicking up the local color from the Nazis, which is why he has a uh, black leather and metallic look to him. And despite as, you know, difficult as that conceptualization might have been to come up with, it comes off pretty well in the film. Mol Molossar is a threatening character in the film. His, his different representations don't seem silly, they seem like a, a progression, similar in a way to the progression of uh, Frank's makeup in uh, Hellraiser. You know, the way he goes from being a skeleton to a fully fleshed out creature. So ultimately what I want to say is, if you think that keeps a bad film, <laughs> read the book. And then I think you'll, you'll see, as I did, that man was really trying to make a great film.
and ultimately just got crushed in the production and couldn't finish it the way he wanted to. And just for fans of like Gabriel Byrne or, uh, or Ian McKellen, Jurgen Prochnow, Robert Prosky, all the leads, they're, they're kind of great in this film, even though their characters don't really have much to do until the plot decides to come to an end. Scott Glenn, not so much. Not, not, one, of his better, not one of his better film experiences, I don't think. But I can tell you, whatever you make of his and Alberta Watson's love scene in the film, believe me, it's preferable to what's in the book. There's something about performances that come out of being in uncomfortable, cold, chilly places as a kind of uh, raw quality that you just don't get otherwise. The same way you get that kind of raw quality in, say, uh, The Ninth Configuration with uh, Stacy Keach. The Keep is a passion project, flawed, lopsided, but ultimately fascinating in the choices that were made in making it. And like all of man's earlier work, it's a visually arresting piece of cinema, despite its shortcomings.